Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today we're doing something a bit different with a new type of video that I'm calling Diffused Weekly. So this is something I do on Friday where I talk about some topics I wasn't able to cover but I think are really worth going over. So I have three or four topics today and I think you'll find them really cool. The first is a project that I had never really heard of but the team has worked on things that I've showcased before. So this is a tool called Dragan. It's similar to ControlNet and some of the models we've seen that work with um, active perceptive manipulation. So basically changing in real time a dynamic or a perspective of a given object. What's interesting is this model doesn't actually use some of the similar nerf techniques that we've seen before where it's estimating sort of a, a three-dimensional space. Um, this actually completely works in 2D space, which is really, really incredible given how contextually aware and easily this model can do things without any prompting. What's interesting is you see in the video here, most of the manipulation is just point-based and everything going on generally is the model extracting context from the scene itself. I think this is just really, really cool and a type of manipulation we just haven't seen before. Control net got really close. There's some generative video models that can do things similar to this in terms of shifting perspective and understanding subject background and other attributes of an environment. But doing it purely in 2D is pretty cool. So definitely check this out. The link is in the description below. The next one is another really impressive release from NVIDIA. So Runway ML has probably been the, the most well-known in this space for having a cohesive and highly functional product that can create video from prompts. Runway Gen 1 was cool because you got us to a point where we were past like stuttery animations coming out of a frame by frame interpolation from stable diffusion, which was kind of interesting. And initially like the resolution was pretty low. It wasn't very good. Uh, Gen 2 has been incredible. I don't really understand necessarily how these are being used commercially yet just because the resolution is so low, but there are already some dedicated creators that basically only do runway ML Gen 2 work and they're getting really good. They're limited in scope, like you can tell the model favors certain things, but as NVIDIA usually does, they kind of watch what's going on and then play the field for what they think is popular and then focus their engineering talent and come up with something that is genuinely new. They did this in the nerf space and they've now done it in the text to video space. So they call this model PyYoko and uh, it's another text to video diffusion model that's based on the uh, eDiffy model by NVIDIA. So completely done with NVIDIA tooling, kind of similar to Meta, they have built an entire pipeline internally and parts of it have been released. It's not entirely open source like Meta's pipeline. But what's cool is Payoko can generate compositional videos by describing a protagonist. So the difference is as opposed to describing an entire scene and then hoping that the, uh, the, the clip model actually understands what you want, they've actually broken it down and said, no, we want a protagonist, an action, and a location. The model is also capable of generating videos in a wide variety of styles. And these styles have had way more depth and just weird detail-oriented context that you wouldn't normally see. And what I also really like is they're very motion aware. Um, one thing that a lot of these models struggle with, and actually Facebook has gotten closest to this in terms of their multimodal models that can understand motion input. In terms of physics and in terms of realistic motion and movement, even in things like lightning or like a bunny's ears, this model is really, really impressive with what it can do. And the next is um, something we're doing at dedicated video on just because this space has gotten so big. Uh, the last video we did didn't garner as much attention as we really anticipated, but um, Scotty Fox and his new company at Blockade Labs has given more insight into how their Skybox model works. What's interesting is now there are actually open source workflows that, that allow you to create these Skyboxes. And granted, Blockade Labs is by far the best at it and has been doing this the longest in terms of the space of using VR with Stable Diffusion to create 3D environments. The big thing they released is that generally speaking, everything they're doing is being generated in 2D and then mapped into a space. They've also pretty much released about half of the workflow they use to actually generate these spaces. So what we know now is the model they use is a fine-tuned and sort of modified version of Stable Diffusion 1.4 that they're calling LDM3D. It's been modified predominantly for image and depth map data. And depth maps, for those of you who don't know, are really critical in terms of mapping in 3D space. And it's different than just like Stable Diffusion 2, where uh, you can use a depth layer to define 
attributes of detail in your so this is really cool as i said we have a dedicated video going into more of this because what's interesting is this has spurned an entire array of tools and new kind of workflows in the gaming space and it's also bled into vfx and smoke effects and explosion effects and it's getting really cool really really fast so look out for that so sticking with the theme of sort of vfx tools being made with ai another one that i've been following for a while is a model called LayersNet, which is pretty cool because it's a model that only works on garment animation. So basically um, figuring out how fabrics move around solid body objects while they're moving. What's interesting is, at least in terms of computer science, this problem has been very, very difficult to solve and one that basically people figured, well, like we might never really have a true way of simulating this realistically because there's so many like finite elements moving around that it's nearly impossible without, you know, hundreds of GPUs to do this in real time. And what's interesting is there's been kind of this paradigm shift where we've now realized that if it's an instance where it's not simulating a rocket engine or a jet engine where the failure mode is kind of really not good, you can actually use AI to interpolate this in near real time and do it about 80% as well as a true physics accurate simulation. I think the cool thing with this is as more of these tools emerge, we'll see better workflows emerge. And I think within the next year or so, it'll be very interesting to see how all these tools begin to build standards so you can use them in between each other, have contextual elements of one tool to another in in terms of the environment you're working in actually interact with each other. So for instance, like how this fabric would sound if it was rubbing up against different materials, if you were near a beach, if you were in a closed room with more reflection, I think that could be pretty interesting. I want to round it out with another model that's predominantly used for motion interpolation. But one thing that's interesting and that's been kind of an upcoming trend is building models that are highly physics aware. And again, this has to do with uh, a contextual understanding of what's going on in an environment that the model sees. So for instance, like a dirt bike going through water, understanding that there are rocks under the river, um, seeing a car drive on a road or in the desert and understanding how traction might work differently and then generalizing that. So you don't actually have to have, you know, massive data sets and inputs to make any of this work. So what this model is called is make a protagonist. Interestingly enough, this is building on top of the idea that NVIDIA stated, which was why take the first step of running into a clip where, you know, why make that something where you're reaching into a black burlap bag or a, this an empty space where the human basically knows what they want. And if you can be more specific, why not improve the result coming out? The most impressive one I see here is where uh, you see first off protagonist generation with very accurate motion mapping. And then in the end where they show you protagonist editing. So if you wanna see us do specific coverage on one of these, um, definitely let me know. Keep a lookout for our 360 VR video update on Blockade Labs coming out soon. And as always, if you liked our content, um, please like or subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.